Welcome back to the Stan Simpson Show. Here now with Central Connecticut State University Pro- Associate Professor Paul Pedersen. Elena Kagan in the news. The Solicitor General now is going to be the Supreme Court nominee of Barack Obama. Uh, the politics and the punditry is going out there. What's to make of this? This could be a historic uh, pick and that she'd be the third woman on the Supreme Court. What's your take on all this? I, I think she's very interesting on a number of uh, fronts. She, she'll be the third, not only the third woman, but all three women who will, would now be sitting on the court if she's confirmed would be from the New York City area in one way or another. So I, I think that's an interesting confluence of perspectives. Mm-hmm. And well, actually, too, in the history of the Supreme Court, there's only been six selections who were not white guys. That's right. That's fascinating. That's right. That's right. And that's because politics at that level was so dominated by white men. Yeah. And what's interesting even more is that uh, with John Paul Stevens leaving the court, if Kagan is confirmed, there will be no Protestants on the Supreme Court. Interesting. There'll be seven Catholics and two people of the Jewish faith on the court. Now, which how is, important is that? Well, again, it's historic mm. because historically most of the people who sat on the court up, particularly until the 20th century, were almost exclusively Protestant yeah, and white. Well, here's uh, some thoughts from Kagan herself on this historic nomination. Ms. Kagan. I am honored and I am humbled by this nomination and by the confidence you have shown in me. The court is an extraordinary institution in the work it does and in the work it can do for the American people. Got a little New York thing going on, a little, little, North, little trace of New York accent, right? right. Makes her sort of an right. everyday person. Right. But that's the interesting thing, too. She, she, if you look at her background, she has been everywhere. Mm. She, she is in the network, as I would, I would call it. You know, she, she went to Princeton. She went to Harvard Law School. She's now the Solicitor General. She was a Supreme Court uh, law clerk, mm-hmm. which is actually very rare. Only a few Supreme Court justices have actually clerked for, for Supreme Court mm-hmm. justices before them. John Paul Stevens being the most recent. The only thing she hasn't done is sat on the bench. Right? That's right. And that's a, a major issue here, having no bench experience at a pro or con for her. But, yeah, I, th- I, I think it can be a pro. Why? Uh, because I've always thought that there was too much emphasis on you absolutely positively have to have sat as a judge. And if you look at the history in the 20th century, two of the most, I would say, prominent and influential justices of the 20th century... Louis Brandeis and Felix Frankfurter, neither had sat as a judge before their appointment mm. to the court. They both either been practicing attorneys in Brandeis's case or in Frankfurter's case, a uh, longtime law professor. Well, the good news is if you have no bench experience, there's no paper trail for them That's to take right. apart. Right. The bad news is you're not really quite sure what she thinks about things. That's right. She's <laughs> she's very much her own person in that she can really define herself. And a number of justices like um, uh, David Souter have, have done that. They have had very little track record on court-type issues. And then so once they've gotten on, they haven't necessarily been what the president who appointed them expected. Mm. And, you know, everybody should remember that once you're on the court, you're a free agent. doesn't matter the they philosophy of the you, president. Right? <laughs> no, no, not, not unless you've done something that really comes out and it's really nasty. So now what role will she play? It seems like all these players on the bench have a role to play. How, what role will she play in cultivating consensus or being a contrarian? How do you see her I, I, I think she'll be a consensus builder. Based on my reading of her experience at Harvard Law School and being a dean at Harvard Law School, uh, she, she has everything that indicates coalition building. She's, she's someone who doesn't like to come in and be confrontational, just take a position. She seems to be someone who likes to get things done, who likes to make things actually work, and she's willing to cross ideological and other boundaries to do that. But clearly a, a liberal, right? No question about that? Uh... Yes, but, but not necessarily uh, a Thurgood Marshall liberal, mm-hmm. should I say? Um, even though she did praise Thurgood Marshall highly, apparently, uh, in a Law Review article back in 1993. So a moderate-leaning liberal on a 
conservative-leaning bench that right. we're saying here? And I think the hope that Obama may and others may have is that she will try to build bridges between the more liberal and more conservative factions on the court to actually have a consensus view of the Constitution going forward. What's this pick say about the president? What message is he sending, and what does it tell us about his leanings? I, I think it's one more message that Barack Obama is likes to see himself as a little bit above ideology. He's really not, he, he doesn't want confrontation. He wants functioning institutions. And I, I think that's a lot of the reason he probably turned to Kagan, is that he saw her as someone who can build a functioning institution. Who's next? Now, on that bench, you have Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg, who's, uh, is she next? And what do you... She may be, uh, but only, uh, if only for health reasons. Right. I, I doubt she would, you know, she may be one of these justices like Thurgood Marshall who leaves the court because, you know, as he said when he retired, you know, I asked him, why are you retiring? He said, I'm falling apart. Mm. Um, now, Stevens, John Paul Stevens, who's now leaving, his situation was just age, or what was the... I think he, it was probably uh, age. You know, he was one of the longest serving yeah. justices on the court, and probably the feeling like, if I resign now, I'll get a president who I think will put a justice on the bench to my liking. Uh, Strategic, than, right? It's important. Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think a lot of justices think about that. All right. He's Paul Pettison, Central Connecticut State University, my alma mater. Always good to have the CCSU guys back on. When we come back, entertainment attorney James Walker will talk about the late Lena Horne, the staying power of actress Betty White, and the emergence of Queen Latifah. And the movie producer, don't go away.